So don't buy something ugly just because it's comfortable. I mean, I just, I, I can't be one of those people. I wear high heels, but I'm comfortable in them. They're the most, my, they, they are my most comfortable shoes. It is an act of selfishness to wear heels. That's not a good example. Um, <laughs> Hey, welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and I am so excited that you're here today. I'm so happy to have you here. We are um, growing this channel so quickly. So if you have not hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit subscribe because we're just so sure you're gonna wanna hang around. <laughs> But if you have subscribed and you've already hit the notifications button, we would be so delighted and honored if you would share our videos with your family and friends. Our channel has already grown to 30,000 subscribers. I can't believe that. I was just asking you guys to help us get to 20 and 25 and it's just growing so quickly. So thank you so, so much for that. And let's just jump into this video because I think this is a subject no, I know this is a subject that comes up all the time with my clients. For those of you that have been to the House of Valentina before, you guys know that we run a design and real estate firm here. So we um, help our clients, they buy and sell homes with us. We also help them stage those homes and we even get to help them renovate them and decorate them. So. We consider you guys part of this family and we're so delighted that you get to be a part of this. And these are the things that we're hearing from you. These are the things that we're hearing from our clients and they kind of make us sad. So we want to debunk a whole bunch of these myths. Myth number one is I cannot have nice things with kids. There is a level of truth to that. Let's just be perfectly honest. Yeah, they have a knack for finding the things that are breakable. I don't know what it is with them or if we just tune out them touching everything else and then all of a sudden it's like Ooh! yeah that could be us it really could be us and i think that we can have nice things in our homes we have to teach our children not to touch certain things and for sure we've had periods in which all the nice things were you know up here and higher let's face it let's be really honest here it's usually the adults that will spill wine on the rug or drop their food on your upholstery in the dining room it, it's usually the adults so every now and then it's the kids. But it's a learning process to creating a home and they are part of that. So number two is I can't paint the walls white or light because I have children or dogs or pets. Same thing for number one. It's always like, it's always the same exact list. It's I have dogs and cats and animals and gerbils and children and there's, it's like a zoo in here. And uh, I can't have those walls white. They'll see me trying to get out, my handprints. <laughs> My children have heard more often than anything else, why are your hands on the wall? And they say, well, because I'm gonna fall down the stairs if I don't hold on to something. I'm like, that's what the railing is for. You see the other side where there's a railing? Instead of like this down the stairs, you hold on to the railing. Yes. Sorry, I get very passionate. So yes, teach your children to hold the railing. And in the meantime, there is the most amazing invention. Those little Mr. Clean things. I know you guys are like, yeah, I've got them and they don't work. No, they do work. And your paint has to be updated every so often. Anyways, it's really good for the maintenance of your house. You can have nice paint. You can have light paint. I do. And not in this room. This is the madness room. We're all allowed to touch the walls in here. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Number three, stainless steel appliances are the best. Stainless steel appliances are awesome. I have them in my own house, but can I tell you they drive me nuts. Handprints are always on that stainless steel. I swear my child must be like ravenous or something. It's just like <laughs> And he's got his hands on there like so many plates fade me in this house. There's so many options that you can do for your appliances. Myth number four, matching sets are a no-no. So that means you should not go to the store and buy a dining room set with the matching chairs or the sofa set that has the sofa and the matching chairs or maybe the love seat. So it's not completely true. For so many people, that makes sense. That's why Rooms to Go has been so popular over the years. But people say, oh, well, that's not as high end. You just need to mix the other stuff around it. You don't necessarily want to have all the tables match. Myth number five is I should buy a matching set. Ha! 
Yeah, I know, I'm so evil. <laughs> okay, so we got both sides of the coin here and we, we have to talk about it, right? Because it's not evil to buy a matching set and it is not evil to buy a non-matching set. There's no right answer. The right answer is create a home that you love and don't worry about what other people think. Buy what you really like. I personally like to have my sofa and chairs and the tables to all be mixed up because I get bored easily and I don't want to pick one thing and be done. I like to mix things up. It's part of my personality. We are representing our own style and maybe you like things to be more uniform and that is a part of your personality. So just own it and if you don't, like that and you want to have things mismatched, if you like a little bit of un unique you know, variety, that's part of your personality, so just go with it. Myth number six is I need a designer to have a beautiful home. As someone who works in design, I make my living from people paying me to help them design their homes. That does not mean that you have to pay a designer in order to have a beautiful home. You were able to do so many things on your own and I hate when I go to somebody's house and they've lived with this sort of like anxiety, guilt, and sadness over the home that they've created on their own because you can do great things on your own. The main thing is, is that you have to have the time to actually focus on it. And I think that's where the struggle really comes is that when you're trying to DIY your home, you're doing it yourself and you aren't paying a designer, you have to take the burden of all those things that a designer does onto yourself. You can't just assume that you can just go to the store and pick something out and it's all gonna work. Research it and have fun doing that because it is a lot of fun to design your own home. I don't need a designer in order to have a beautiful home. Well, it doesn't hurt, let's just say that. But I will say hiring the right person is so important. A designer helps you measure everything and um, a lot of times they have access to things that you may not even know about and they help you come up with one-of-a-kind designs. They, they, a good designer should really tap into who you are and creating a home around that. Myth number eight, comfort is more important than anything. There are a lot of really, really ugly sofas and chairs out there that are very comfortable. And I just don't think that it helps you build a beautiful home. Because on the flip side of that, there are some amazingly comfortable pieces of furniture out there and they're beautiful. You can have a comfortable home that's pretty. So why only limit yourself because you think, oh, well, that, that store is just pretty, therefore they won't have comfortable things. Look everywhere. That's the, that's the joy of decorating your house. Myth number nine is I should only follow one style. I, I, I don't know where this myth came from, but a lot of people have fallen into that trap and it's hard to come back out of it because you've invested something into your space and it's very hard to take things away or throw things out. I know a lot of you have an easier time with that than some, but some of you have a hard time if you have spent your hard earned money, they jerked it out of your hands, just getting rid of stuff. But the thing is, is that as you build your home, you can take from any style you want. I have the craziest, most eclectic mix of things. I have things from all over the place and I tie them together through color and yeah, color's a big deal for me. That's why my house is typically kind of black and white. It's because it ties all the crazy things that I've collected from all these different places into one space. Myth number 10, I should move my furniture in one place and never move it again. If you've watched my last video, about moving the boys' rooms and switching them, then you know that I, more than anybody, believe in moving things around. Blame it on all these crazy moves that we've done over the years. I don't know, I could just get bored. That could be a factor. However, you can still move your furniture around. Make a new arrangement, move the sofa to a different wall, try something else. It's amazing how it will elevate your home and it will make you feel like you've got something fresh and new and it will keep you from just frivolously going out and buying new stuff. Tip number 11 is gonna be very controversial, so let's just get that out right now. I almost hate to even utter the words. Oh my God, am I really gonna, oh, am I really gonna say this? I'm just gonna say it. You can pay, okay, <laughs> the myth is I can't paint wood furniture. Reality is, of course you can. 
you've watched my channel for very long, you know that I love to paint wood furniture, but I do not paint all wood furniture. So I will leave links for you for videos where we did not paint the wood furniture and I will leave links in the show notes for ones that we did. Painting your wood is a great idea if you have a wood that is not necessarily of huge value to you or to other people. Myth number 12, art should be bought from a store and should always be framed. That's a massive myth. I frame all kinds of crazy stuff. I, I frame pieces that I found in Morocco. Um, I have pieces that are literally, I have pieces that are framed and it's literally a tear sheet out of a magazine. There is no limitation to what you can put inside a frame, but you can also think outside the frame. You can frame all kinds of cool, I mean, right now, like crochet things, and there's so many cool things that are out there that are, you can put on your walls. You can, anything can be art. If you are able to hang it on the wall and you appreciate it for its beauty, that makes it art, so don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Myth number 13 is that your trim should always be painted white. I have no idea where this came from, my guess, is that builders started doing it and therefore everybody else started doing it or maybe at some point there was a decorator that did it and then everybody just accepted it as truth as that's just how it's supposed to be you can see behind me my my molding here is painted the same color as the wall and it's painted all the way down to the floor in this room even the ceiling is painted the same color because i wanted it to be really cozy and cocoon like and warm and cozy and mm. so your trim does not have to be white. You can paint it any color you want. You can make it two colors. You can make it three. You can paint inside. You can paint outside. You can paint the wall. I mean, you're, don't let someone else's ideas limit you, okay? So yeah, trim can be white, but it can also be painted. Myth number 14 is that all windows need blinds and curtains. If you guys have watched my staging video on how to stage like a million dollar listing, you know that I have this pet peeve about blinds everywhere. I, I don't know where the prison syndrome comes from, where everybody wants to be caged in. I cannot handle it. Maybe it's because I am a wild and free spirit and there is probably some truth to that, but I need the outside to come in and I can't handle there being blinds all over everyone. And I suggest maybe the bedroom is a great place for some window coverings, but you don't have to have them everywhere. It will lighten and brighten your home to not have curtains. I do think that curtains can be a great idea and I'm not opposed to them. I have them in several of my rooms. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't have curtains and you shouldn't have blinds, but you don't have to have them on every single window and every single door. Myth number 15 is that fake plants are bad. Bad. I may be guilty of saying that. There's a possibility that I've said that in past videos. Fake plants are not all bad, but fake plants are not all created equal. And if this is something that you want to hear more about, let me know down in the comment section because I have become a master of spotting the fakes. I'm like, oh, that's a fake. And my mom might drive her nuts because I'm like, I got a fake plant radar that's just like, there's a fake. But there are a lot of really good fakes that you would not in a million years have guessed that was fake. Myth number 16 is that all wood in the room has to be the same color. I have no idea where that idea came from, but it's not true. I think that things should feel like they go with the same level of formality. They feel like they go together. I'll have to get a picture of my sister and, and we, we are not in any way twins, right? But we look like we go together. You can tell that there's some Familiar, familial resemblance, I can't talk today. There is some familial, I can't talk, I can't say that word. There's a resemblance, people. There's a resemblance between myself and my sister, and that is how your furniture should be. Another huge myth is that your home has to be expensive to be pretty or nice, and that is so far from the truth. There's always gonna be somebody with more money, and there's always going to be, there's always gonna be somebody with less, and you should just take what you have and make the most of it. Make the most beautiful home with what you have. And don't worry about whether it's expensive or what the, whatever the price tag was attached to it. That's not important. I asked you guys over on Instagram, what were your favorite 
myths that you wish people would know are just that. And um, Gia Schultz wrote in, she said, symmetry, a rule I love to break, always more interesting when not symmetrical. That is so true. As I said, well, I have two symmetrical things back here, but you know what? There is not symmetry in everything. And sometimes people get really caught up in thinking that everything has to be symmetrical and then it loses, I don't know, like it, it stops being interesting because your eye just becomes methodical. My battery died, so I used the excuse to go make myself a little mocha. Mm. My apologies. One of our final tips is my home has to be perfect at all times. Well, there's a reason that I left the dying branches here. I don't know if you can see, you may not be able to tell, but there was a drawer open for half of the video and there's laundry on my bed and there's stuff sitting on my counters right now. And you know what? I, I clean up when you guys come over. I mean, you guys do the same when I come over. So I kind of feel like it's okay that I clean up when you guys come to visit. And most of us do that. And so when my clients say to me, but your house is always perfect, I'm like, <laughs> ah, that's funny. No, my house is not perfect. I have three children, I have a dog, I have a husband, and none of them, none of them is as neat and tidy as I am. <laughs> <laughs> and even I make messes myself. So I just think that oh, I thought a lot about what, what I want out of this YouTube channel, what I want to share with you guys, what I hope that you'll take away from it, what I, why it's even worth my time, why it's even worth yours. Why do we do this? Why are we here? Well, because if there's one thing that I could tell you that I would hope that you would take away from all of it is that you are so unique and your life is so beautiful and your home can be the most beautiful place on the planet. From all the places that I visited, so many of you opening up your homes to us, I've just realized like this is the most important thing is that our home isn't about the stuff that we put in it. It's about the love that is inside of it. So if there's anything that you take away from this is that focus less on the stuff. The stuff is the fun, it's fun. It's just fun. I love it. I love painting, I love decorating, I, I just love it. But also remember that the love that you fill your home with is always the most important thing. And the laughter and the memories, you can have a beautiful home with almost no money. You just need your love, you need your family. Focus on that, focus on that more than anything else. We, our favorite memories are sitting around a cardboard box and playing Uno with our kids. Like, it's not about how much we've spent on it. It's not about a price tag. It's not about whether it's perfect. <laughs> my battery died right in the middle of me pouring my heart out to you guys. So <laughs> we're gonna wrap this thing up really quick. I hope today has been a great video for you and that it's inspired you to focus on creating that beautiful home life of yours and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow us on Instagram. I've got two accounts there, Valentina Fussell and the House of Valentina. We update there daily and we'd love to see you there. So we'll see you very soon. Bye. And all my children are coming home. <laughs> and, and look, here's where the mess is come. Oh wait, you're not the messy child. <laughs> I'm the clean. You're the clean one who takes his things and puts them away in your room. Yeah. You should be a little angel. This one, on the other hand, you will fluff me in. I have to clean that back there. Yes, uh, you're a crazy man. <laughs> crazy man. What you got in your hands? Oh, you got your flashcards? Yes, yeah, so you have to get back to our homework. I need that money. Only if I get a kiss. I need that. I need this Cheetos. I need that <laughs> secret present. Woohoo! Woohoo! We'll see you guys soon. Bye.